All right, guys, today we're going to look at the complete Star Wars Rebels Funko Pop list, and there are 17 of them in total, and I got two extra chopper variants for you guys to take a look at. Uh, there's a couple of misprints that are pretty unique and that you can collect, and I would highly suggest collecting this entire line because a lot of them will be making their live-action appearances in the next few years, with a few of them even making their debut in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show um, next May. So look forward for that, but for now, let's take a look at these Funko Pops and let's get right into the video. And first up, we got the Hot Topic exclusive Ahsoka, which is PPG priced around $50 right now. And the special edition sticker variant is currently PPG priced around $43 to $46, so very close in price. This pop is one of the first exclusives with the Sabine Mass Walgreens exclusive, as you guys can see on the back of the box, with the original line. And this is actually the only version of Ahsoka voiced by Ashley Eckstein, um, with her white lightsabers. So this is a really fun one to pick up if you want to get one signed by her specifically, because the other ones that uh, show off her white lightsabers is the pop from The Mandalorian, which is Rosario Dawson's version of Ahsoka. So I highly recommend collecting this one, because if, you if you're a big fan of the Grey Jedi Order, perhaps maybe in the future if they want to do it correctly. <laughs> But overall, I really enjoyed this pop. It's one of my favorite pops that exists in general. And I have a hard debate sometimes looking between this one and the glow. And actually, the glow has grown on me significantly. So let's go take a look at that one right now. Next up, we got the Ahsoka Kamikaze version. The LA Comic Con from, I believe, 2018? And it is a glow-in-the-dark pop, and the glow is the entire pop, obviously, as you guys can tell. It's like the holographic version of Ahsoka, kind of. And at first, I wasn't a big fan of this one. I don't really like the holographic ones. But over time, I can, I can tell you, it grows on you a lot. Just, it, it's simplicity, but with the overall glow effect, it looks so cool. So let's check out the glow real quick. So, really quick, we'll just show off what the glow looks like with the light directly on it. Wow, the entire pop glows. And it just looks fantastic. With the sticker too, let's take a look at what this pop looks like with the flashlight off. Now, here she is while she's spinning around with no flashlight black light on her right now. And oh my gosh, the glow is so beautiful. And this is why I really like this pop. With the glow effect and the stickers, it just kind of grows on you over time. And I would highly recommend picking this one up. And to close out this pop, I do want to say real quick that the PPG price with this Kamikaze sticker is about $70. And if you want the special edition version, it is around currently $60. So a little bit less. Again, I just recommend trying to find this version. But... There are only about nine Ahsokas in total, so if you are a fan of her, both of these Rebels ones are a must, and they are the most expensive versions and hardest ones to find. So if you come across them and you're a fan of the character, definitely pick them up. But now, let's take a look at Sabine. And next up, we got the Walgreens exclusive Masked Sabine, which is currently going around $48 with the Walgreens sticker, or again, special edition. You can probably get it for around $41, but... I do want to tell you guys, this is one of the pops that is going super low on Amazon. Again, it is real. So you guys can pick it up for probably around $30. So this is a great addition to try and add right away. You will probably get the special edition sticker if you do it that way. But again, totally worth it. Great steal uh, for the pop. And overall, a great character. And I mean, it displays her art perfectly and how she spray paints her own helmets and her own gear. It's um, one of the few times we get a really cool artsy Mandalorian character. And overall, it looks really great, and it totally captures her personality, even with the helmet on. Now, to follow that up, the very first pop, part of the common wave of this line, we got the Jedi Knight Kanan. And 
As you guys know, he is one of the most famous characters from this show. And this is an early version of him. As you guys know, he probably uh, takes a little bit of a physical damage later within the show. I won't spoil anything, but for now, it's a very early version of Kanan with his long hair. Um, still training Ezra, but it's a great pop. He looks great with his lightsaber and totally captures his look from the show. Alright guys, now I'm going to have to break this one down because this is kind of a complex pop we have here. We got a lot of misprints, but he's a really fun one to try and find in the wild. So this is my chopper. Now you might notice a few things getting around to the back. And yes, this is not sun fading actually. This is a genuine misprint. This isn't um, some uh, huge misprint that a lot of people have. This is just one that I stumbled across in the wild. And as you can see as he's turning on this side in the bottom left corner, you can see the cut from the pink to the orange uh, showing again that it is not sun faded. And I can t we'll take some close ups real quick to show what else is different with the uh, box. So one of the first things to look at is the top completely pink and as you guys can see there's an outline of a character I'm trying to figure out who that is and I was able to figure out by looking at the other sides and if you guys want to try and guess who it is feel free to write in the comments and be honest let's see if you guys can get it you guys might have even been able to see the faint outline of the print of the name behind the chopper logo his name itself you guys can kind of see it and if we take a look at the back I don't know if you guys can see it too well, but there is some outlines of what uh, the other box looks like. And if you guys haven't been able to guess it yet, it is in fact the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. A very weird box to get mixed up with. I have got it checked through a few people, and there's a few possibilities we thought it could have been. We, could, we thought it could have been a fake box, with, but a real pop. But after a little bit of research, it seems like sometimes these things happen. So, uh, Star Wars misprint, um, you always got to try and pick that up if you can. So, normally, this box should be more of an orangish color. Um, that's pretty much the only difference. I could get the normal version still, but let's uh, take a look at what one, the official misprint for the Chopper Pop actually looks like. Now, can you guys already see something a little bit different with this box? Because now it might be a little bit more obvious looking at the front. But yes, they had a whole bunch of these Chopper uh, Funko Pops uh, come out with just the name Chop. Which is a huge misprint. And there are a lot of them out there. So you can find them. They are rare. They are hard to find. But there are some. And I would highly recommend trying to find a misprint. They're super fun. I actually came across the misprint before the actual pop, and I had no idea. And then, then when I learned about it, I was like, you know what? I have to collect the Star Wars Rebels line. So I think the first one I got was Ahsoka, but this was the one that got me into uh, collecting the entire set. Now, as, as you guys can see, this should be what the top looks like generally a little bit more. A little bit more of an orange color. And if we take a look at the back again... A lot more orange and yellow instead of that pink color that that other misprint has. But every single spot, it just says chop. Super cool. This would be a cool one, I think, to get signed by the voice actor that voices him, Mr. Dave Filoni himself. So yeah, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but the actual chopper pop itself is going for around $55. And the PPG for the misprint is around $75. So it is about $20 more. It is harder to find because, you know, there were less of them. They did end up uh, manufacturing a bunch of the correct ones. So definitely keep your eye out for a, a misprint because they can be found. Now let's take a look at the other version of chopper his, with his imperial disguise. The, uh, he used this for one episode, but it is a Star Wars Celebration Pop, so let's go take a look at that. So next up, we got the Star Wars Celebration Chopper. Now this is actually the Galactic Convention exclusive version, but I will go and switch it up to the Celebration in a second. I just want to show this one off for a second. It is the same exact pop, but with all my misprints and everything, I was like, you know what? Let's just collect the other sticker. Let's just try and get them all, I guess. Whatever at this point. It was just fun. I was in a huge chopper phase at one point. <laughs> Still love him to death. Still one of my favorite characters. But yeah, the uh, shared sticker is actually only PPG price around $29. 
the celebration is around 48. So let's take a look at that one now. As you guys can see, it is the same exact pop, just different sticker. There are no other differences here. Um, so we can take a look at the Star Wars Celebration one now. So yeah, uh, Chopper does use its disguise, I believe only like once in the show, but it is a pretty fun episode of them just uh, going through the enemy base and kind of staying undercover and low key. I haven't seen the episode in a while, if you guys haven't been able to tell. But I am a huge fan of the Star Wars Celebration sticker. I absolutely love it. I think it just looks so cool. Again, I would really try and get this pop. Um, the PPG is pretty low, but honestly, I, I have trouble finding this uh, Star Wars Celebration version for less than $100. I've seen some postings for around $120, even reaching $140, $160. So I would try to get this pop in person. Uh, there's not a lot of postings on it as of recently. But because Chopper is one of the most famous droids in the entire Star Wars universe, who also, you know, as you guys know, made a cameo in Rogue One, and could also possibly make more cameos in the future. And Dave Filoni, you know, is a homie, he's a king, so I hope he writes himself in the show, that'd be awesome. And here are all the choppers together that I have. I really enjoy them all together. I think they're really fun to collect. Uh, I haven't seen that many misprints, especially in the wild. So if you guys see one, I would try and pick one up. These are actually some of the only ones I have. Um, but yeah, they look pretty cool together. I might pick up a normal chopper again in the future. But for now, I'm really happy with these four I got. Now let's take a look at the rest of the common line. Now for Pop 134, we got the main character of the series himself, Ezra, and he is currently PPG priced for around $80, and he is one of the ones that has been skyrocketing, and I guarantee you we will see a live action version of Ezra, and we will probably see a little bit more of him in the animated series, I hope so, but definitely uh, keep your eyes out with that Ahsoka series and the casting list of that. And I personally think this pop looks great. So much detail to his uh, basic uniform. He has this really cool lightsaber that he has that he built um, at the beginning of the series that also like shoots. Overall, I just really enjoy this pop. I think they knocked it out of the park. Um, him using a little bit of the force with his lightsaber that he crafted himself really early in the series. It's a really cool version of Ezra, and I really like that they made this mold. Really good common design, in my opinion. And next up, we got the unmasked version of Sabine. And this is the common version of her that was uh, released in the set. And I actually really enjoy this one as well. Again, it really helps display her personality traits of her dyeing her hair and having a lot of fun with her artistic work. At the time of getting this pop, I actually was trying to decide which version I wanted. And I'm really glad that I have both of them now. Because they show her off in both different ways slightly one a little bit more of her mandalorian self and then the other one helps show what she's really like in the show and how fun she is with her hair and as you guys can see it is the same exact mold as the other version the only difference is the head mold and even though it is a huge difference i i consider it two completely different pops and it really is Having uh, both versions, the Mandalorian and the normal, is almost a must when you're collecting this line. Um, there's many times in the entire show where she is masked and unmasked, so highly recommend getting this pop because this one is getting pretty hard. Both of the Sabines are getting pretty difficult to find and not increasing in price, but just hard to find in really good prime condition. And the PPG price for this Sabine is also around $55. So if you guys are trying to decide one or the other, really go with which one you guys personally like. And that pretty much sums up Sabine from the entire line. So if you guys want to try and decide to only get one of them, really try and pick and choose. I can show you guys what they look like right next to each other too. And here they are side by side. Again, as you guys can see, same exact mold, just completely different head sculpts. But they look so different, even with the sticker too. Different numbers and everything. Uh, two, considered two completely different pops in the line, obviously, because one's exclusive and one's a common. But if you guys are trying to pick them up, they are around the same price. So now let's go take a look at the next queen, Hera. So here is the Twi'lek herself, Hera. And I love Twilight Pops, and I love how they look. 
so simple but with their head design and the skin coloring Hera looks great and as you guys can see as we get to the back of the box she is the second to last pop of the common wave of the original Star Wars Rebels set and we'll finish out with Zeb in a second but just even the art design, I love her pose, the simplicity behind it. It looks really great with her gun and her goggles. I absolutely adore this pop, and because the PPG price is only $30, it's very affordable and a lot easier to find out of the rest, uh, or at least compared to the rest of the sale. Some of them do get very difficult to find. So this one is a great one to pick up to start collecting for your Star Wars Rebels line. And to finish out the common wave, we have Zeb, who again is one of the cheaper alternatives to this wave. He is PPG priced around $33. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that he is not the cheapest. Hera is a very popular character. Uh, it seems like she gets a little bit more of a positive reception than Zeb. Uh, Zeb's character development de definitely falls a little bit as the show goes. They definitely start focusing on the other characters. But again, I really enjoy this pop. It definitely looks like Zeb from the show. Um, he's holding his gun. He's got this green eyes. Pretty unique Star Wars pop in general. You don't really see too many unique aliens out there. So it is really nice to see them keep uh, diversifying their pops uh, throughout the entire Star Wars universe. Even if it is a main character, it's very nice to see. And I'm really happy they made a mold for this character. And next up, to start getting into a little bit more of the exclusives, we got the Smuggler's Bounty Captain Rex, who is currently PPG priced for around $39. And this is one of my, this is definitely one of my favorite pops from the entire set. Old Man Rex, straight out of Endor from Episode 6. If you guys don't know that Easter egg, look it up on YouTube. Just type in Captain Rex Endor, and you will see one of the coolest little Easter eggs that they uh, canonized from the original trilogy. Again, he was a Smuggler's Bound exclusive with the Darth Maul. And he is, I love this pop. I love how he's wearing his clone armor still. And I do have the Captain Rex Clone Wars pop somewhere. Um, but again, the clone armor is a lot more detailed in that version. But this makes sense for where he's at in his life, being a lot older. His armor being a lot more worn down after uh, being on the run for so long. But... Super awesome pop with his double, uh, with his dual wield pistols, of course. Um, it's iconic, and I love this pop. Definitely try and get this one before skyrockets too high because Smuggler's Bounty exclusives can get really high. And if you don't believe that, just take a look at the iconic duel of the fates, one of the most expensive Star Wars pops out there now. So, again, definitely pick this one up and let's take a look at the Elder Smuggler's Bounty exclusive. And next up, we got Darth Maul wielding his dual wheel lightsaber with his robotic legs. This is, in my opinion, one of the cooler Darth Maul pops. They completely captured his Rebels look, in my opinion. And he, as you guys know, he has a lot of different looks throughout his series and his entire run. Um, but yeah, he's currently PPG priced on $55. Sometimes I see him going for a little bit more. But I would definitely try and aim for that price as of right now. Now again, I, I do like this pop. It really looks like the Rebels version. And the Solo version looks like this, like the so from the Solo movie. The Clone Wars looks like a Clone Wars movie. Uh, even the prequel one with the uh, Galactic Convention exclusive. It looks like the Episode 1 prequel. Santa. And it just I, I just love every single Darth Maul mold they do. And I hope they keep making more. I'm really happy they made one for Rebels. Because he is a very important character in Rebels. And um, he has some very iconic moments throughout the entire uh, series. And I very much do enjoy this pop. And highly recommend adding this one to your guys' collection. And next up, we got the beginning of the Walmart exclusives. Pop 166. We got the Grand Inquisitor himself. Now, as you guys can see, uh, my lightsaber and him isn't necessarily perfectly straight. Definitely something to keep your eyes out for. If you guys are getting any Star Wars pop, definitely take a look at the lightsabers in them. Sometimes they bend really hard. This is one that I got a little bit unlucky for, but I'm really happy I was able to find him for um, pretty much a retail price. But he looks great. As you guys know, he's coming into the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So 
this is the first version of him. They will probably make more molds. Again, the first versions are always the most valuable. And this being a, an exclusive, Walmart Pops don't really get too expensive. These are some of the more expensive Walmart Pops I, that I know of. But um, I really enjoy these. And I think all three of them together look fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at the seventh sister. Now here is the seventh sister. And I don't know if I said it last time, but the Inquisitor is PPG priced around $90. And I see him going for a little bit over a hundred. The seventh sister is a little bit more affordable. She is actually only $17 with no sticker. And you can totally find her for around uh, in the twenties. But if you want the Walmart sticker, her PPG price is a little bit higher, around the $48 mark. And I actually, I have a pretty hard time finding the Walmart uh, stickers. Walmart isn't known for great shipping either, so a lot of damage is on those pops as well. But even the small detail, all the detail around her eyes, the little dots they got, they really were able to capture what her face looks like in the actual uh, animated show. As one of the Inquisitors, again, I'm really happy that they made this one at all. I want to see them make all the Inquisitors if possible. Um, knowing her fate, um, we probably won't see her too much in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, but we can take a look at the fifth brother who we do know is going to be appearing in it. As you guys know, Rebels takes place afterwards, so we kind of can figure out a little bit of their fates um, prior to the series and where they're all at. But real quick, I do want to say she is the cheapest um, Inquisitor to get out of the Star Wars Rebels line. So if you guys want to try and find one, in my opinion, she is the easiest one to find. So definitely check her out, try and acquire her, and I hope uh, collecting all the Inquisitors goes well for you guys. And make sure to not get damages on those Walmart stickers. Now for Pop 168, we got the fifth brother who is currently PPG priced for around $65. And again... These Inquisitors are pretty hard to find. I'm finding the prices going a little bit higher than that. If you can find a good deal, I would say it's exactly for the PPG price. Some people are charging over 100 I would say definitely try and push them to a lower price because if you're able to find these in store or like in a comic book store or more of a store that charges the PPG price, you can definitely pick them up for around the $65 price point. And again, I think he looks great with the stickers. Very interesting to see his uh, sculpt with his head and how he looks with all his uh, different uh, body dimensions. Because as you guys know in the show, he looks a little bit different, which is awesome. I love adaptations. It doesn't get enough credit. And instead, people always criticize, like, why doesn't it just look more? Oh, that's kind of the point. It's an adaptation. Animation is supposed to look sl slim and pretty clean for the most part so I actually really do like the adaptation into the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and if you guys uh you might have uh, some more lines and a little bit more uh, things to say so it'll be really interesting to see what happens with this PPG price over time um I do expect it to not increase too much higher but again availability on some of these pops is getting pretty hard especially on these Walmart Inquisitors but let's quickly take a look at the last Inquisitor we have that is lost. So yeah, let's quickly take a look at the big bad villain of this entire series. Now, second to last up, but the big rare one of the entire set is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get you guys a Star Wars Celebration sticker variant. I personally do have the uh, Galactic Convention exclusive. Um, but I got this pop a long time ago. It was one of the very first ones that I got from the line again. And, I, I mean, he's one of my favorite characters. I absolutely love Thrawn. Uh, I've loved him ever since I read his original uh, Timothy Zahn uh, Legends books. And if you guys haven't read those, I highly suggest reading those. Because what Disney's doing with canonizing the Legend stories is great. And I highly uh, support and love it all. Um, I can't wait to see what happens with Thrawn in the future with uh, future spinoffs and the Ahsoka series. Hopefully uh, they cast him perfectly. I would love to see the voice actor come back and play him in live action. But yeah, the uh, PPG for this pop right now is currently around $230 for this version. If you want the Star Wars Celebration version, uh, you're probably going to have to double your uh, your range because it's around $440 right now. 
So yeah, it, overall, Thrawn is one of the rare Star Wars pops. There are around, like I said, uh, there are around 16,000 of them. So there are a lot, very hard to find. As I know, there aren't many fakes. So keep your eyes out. Try and look for him because he's a great steal to find, and he will increase in price. He is definitely a grail already, and a lot of people will love his first appearance in Rebels once he makes his live-action debut. This pop will definitely continue to increase in price. But enough about price. Straight up, the design on this pop. I love his posture. It just is so menacing. You got the red background with the red sticker, his red eyes. Oh, just this dude. Evil, evil, evil. I love it. I couldn't be happier about this pop. And I, again, if, if you guys want to get a Star Wars Grail, this is the one that I would recommend personally. Again, I do think they'll make another mold for him as he does. He will appear again, especially live action. And, um, but again, this is the OG. It's a con exclusive. This has every right to be a grail uh, from its looks to the entire set um, to the con. It's, I love it. And I hope you guys love it just as much as I do. But let's uh, take a look at the uh, last pop of the set the Imperial Super Commando. Now this is the Imperial Super Commando, the most recent uh, Funko Pop of the Star Wars Rebels line. He's Pop 452, which Thrawn was 170, so as you guys can see, there's quite a jump um, in time. There's not even anything else on the back from the rest of the line, but the Summer Convention version, which is this version, is around $14, a pretty retail price, pretty easy to acquire these days. I see them a lot in a lot of different uh, pop shops. Um, if you want the virtual fun, uh, fun con sticker, it's going to be around $25. And pretty much the only difference is of uh, this, this sticker uh, differentiation wasn't that big. And not that many people cared about getting the virtual fun con sticker. It's kind of just blue in the middle where it's white and uh, it kind of switches around the colors. But it kind of looks really similar. Pretty hard to tell. Not that unique. I haven't seen that many people want to try and get uh, those variants of that con specifically. Um, but yeah, again, he is pretty straightforward, pretty cool pop. I'm glad that they keep making pops from the show, and I hope they continue to add some more, even if it is more uh, side characters, uh, such as uh, the Imperial Super Commanders in the show. But I do hope they make more soon. And that is the entire Star Wars Rebels Funko Pop line. And I hope you guys were able to enjoy looking at those chopper variants because I do think a lot of them are pretty unique and can be really hard to find. But all these pops are very old, so don't get discouraged about not being able to find them because they are vaulted. And a lot of them are damaged or even worse, have color damages on the box. A lot of sun fading and slight damages like that so do be on the lookout for that but i wouldn't worry too much about fakes maybe thrawn in the future because he is a popular character i do think they'll make another mold of that character in the future but it it won't be the same one and it won't be from the rebels line so i highly encourage uh, you guys to go out and get this one right now and if we look at the pbg price for the entire set it's around eleven hundred dollars right now so as you guys can see, it's probably most likely going to go up. We've seen some of the um, more main characters like Ezra and Kanan go up recently. And Sabine is getting harder to find. So, highly, highly recommend. And it's a super fun line to go and collect. And I do think the general price for this entire line will go up over time. Uh, it seems like they're not making too many more waves for it. I'd be shocked if they did. Probably more con exclusives, but they're probably going to be focusing on some of the upcoming new series and more Mandalorian pops. But we did get the Imperial Super Commando last year, so there's possibly hope for some other uh, Rebels pops in the future. And there are some of the best Star Wars moments in this show, and that is why I wanted to personally collect this line, and because of my deep love for it. I mean, I watched this show... They're all a college for me, and I grew up on Clone Wars. So, personally, I love Star Wars, uh, the animated series, pretty much all of them. And I am super excited to share this collection with you guys. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your week. And until next time, peace.